Readers, if I were to ask you what authors have you most enjoyed since you were a little kid until now, what would you say? Have you read more than one book by a particular author? Would you think back to books like Captain Underpants and how wacky and hilarious Dave Pilkey is? Did you like R.L. Stein? Did you like to be scared? How about Sharon Draper or maybe Cassandra Clare? Think for a moment. Readers, in this unit of study, you're going to have a chance to become experts in the work of some of the greatest contemporary authors, writers like Matt De La Pina, Jacqueline Woodson, Kwame Alexander, Jason Reynolds, and Walter Dean Myers. These authors are particularly known for realistic fiction, for their commitment to diversity and representation, and for their commitment to writing for teens. So a question you're probably be asking as you read is, what is it that makes these writers' stories so compelling? My hunch is that one thing that makes these stories so interesting is their characters. When you meet a fascinating character, you want to keep reading. In this first bend of the unit, you'll have a chance to read short stories by different authors. In the second bend, you'll choose one of these authors to stay with. Our focus across the whole unit will be on characters, after all. What draws you into a story are the characters. But in addition to studying the characters as people, which is something you've been doing for years, this time you'll also study characterization, how authors develop characters. You'll start by investigating characters' perspectives. How does this character see the world? How does she interpret what happens? How does another character see things differently? How do you, as a reader, come to understand something as subtle and complex as a character's perspective? Readers, to understand a character's perspective, readers pay attention to details especially details that show what a character needs or desires or what barriers get in the way. When you notice details about what a character wants and what gets in his or her way, you begin to understand the perspective of a character. We'll start this work with a story called How to Transform an Everyday Ordinary Hoop Court into a Place of Higher Learning and You at the Podium by Matt De La Pina. Let's read with these questions in mind. Are you ready? Let's see what we find out about the main character in this story. You may want to jot as you listen so you can capture any details or phrases that stand out, or you may decide to listen closely and then do some quick jotting. You know what will work best for you. It's finally summer. Go ahead, take a deep breath. You're free. All year long, your mom's has been on you like glue about algebra worksheets and science fair projects and the knee-high stack of books Mr. Baker assigned for English class. And you did what you had to do. Two A's and four B's. Truth is, you're actually pretty smart. School comes easy. You told Baker in that end-of-the-year five-page paper what was up with Esperanza's dreams and the symbolism of the Mango Street house, and you pulled down a 96%, second-highest grade in the class. But even as you typed out that essay, you had an indoor-outdoor in your lap. Between sentences, you daydreamed finger rolls over outstretched hands. See... Here's what all the hardcore homework pushers don't get. For people like you, ball is more than just ball. It's a way out. A path to those tree-lined lives they always show on TV. You've crunched the numbers and read the tea leaves. Fact is, you'll never hit the books as hard as boy genius Jeremiah Villa. Sylvia Diaz, either even your boy Francisco from down the hall. 
There are folks in this world who live to mark up a fat world history textbook with an arsenal of colored highlighters. You're not one of them. You spend too much time on back alley ball handling drills to compete. Nah, the game of basketball is your best chance. Wow, what an interesting character this narrator is. I want you to put some ideas together. What have you learned about what he wants and desires and what barriers might get in the way? Take a few minutes to stop and jot in your reading notebook. Pause the video. You might have wrote that the boy is already a ball player and what he really wants, what he needs and desires is to play basketball well enough that he can get out of his neighborhood. This means that a perceived barrier might be his neighborhood or his perception that his neighborhood keeps him down. What we're doing is noticing details that help us to understand character's perspective. He's a ball player. He's serious about basketball. He wants to use basketball to get out of his neighborhood. And there is something about his neighborhood that feels to him like it's keeping him from his dreams. I want to give you a tip. Sometimes there will be a particular line that stands out, like this line. It's a way out. That one line tells us so much about this boy, how he wants to get out of this neighborhood, and basketball is his ticket. It's almost like the author is laying a trail of breadcrumbs and you need to follow it. So the tip is cite the text when you can. Be specific. You also want to question why the character is the way he is, which is another way of asking about the experiences that have shaped a character. Why does he want to get out of his neighborhood? What's happened to him to make him want to escape this place? It's true that a character's experiences can shape his or her perspective. Clearly something in the narrator's experience makes him want to escape his neighborhood. So as we read on, if you notice any details that help you better understand that part of his perspective, as in why the narrator feels the way he does, try to hold on to them. Readers, let's go on. As you listen, stay alert to specific details or phrases that help you better understand what this character wants or what barriers get in his way. Perhaps you'll also get some insight into why he feels the way he does as well. The story is divided into small chapters. This next chapter is called The Fate of Your Hoop Development. For the past three years, you've spent every minute balling at an outdoor court down the street from your building, after school, after games, weekends, you name it. Most nights, you're still out there putting up shots alone. When the sun falls behind the ocean and the automatic park lights come flickering on, spilling that strange yellow half light across the cracked concrete. Ball is like anything else. Put in enough hours, your game's going to blast off. Your jumpers now peer out to 25 feet, give or take. You've developed a little floater in the lane that leaves slow-footed big men flailing. But it's your handle that sets you apart, your quicks. The way you can get into the paint at will and finish with either hand. This past season, you scored more points than any other 8th grader in the county. You were second in assist. So what? It ain't good enough and you know it. Not if you want to be even more dominant next year in high school. That's why your ears perk up when you overhear a couple newcomers talking about Muna Jim in Balboa Park. When you overhear the dude with love handles sitting on the stairs say to his boy, it's the best run in the entire city. B, I put that on everything. You ranked him out, the other guy asks. Nah, I used to ball there all the time before I tweaked my back. 
If you can hang with them boys and Mooney, shoot, you can hang with just about anybody. Shelf the extra jumpers that night. Proceed instead to the local library and look up Mooney Gym online. Type the address into Google Earth and you'll discover it's right next to the Air and Space Museum your moms took you and your sis to back in the day. And the Air and Space Museum, if your calculations are correct, isn't but five miles from your pop's job at the factory. Wander into your cramped living room after dinner that night. Work up the guts to describe for your old man the importance of competing against the best. You've outgrown your local run. It's time to put a foot in the deep end. So what if he doesn't even know the rules of the game? If all he does is sit there silently inside the TV, working a toothpick in his teeth. So what do you think, Pop? About what? Would it be cool if I went with you to work every morning so I could play some ball down there? He'll look at you suspiciously, then turn back to his cap show and his toothpick. You'll take this as a no and assume the fate of the most important summer of your hoop development now rests in the hands of the county bus system. But you'll be wrong. A few minutes later, he'll mumble. Better have your skinny butt out by the car by five, I'll tell you that, or else I'm leaving without you. He won't even look up when he tells you this. Doesn't matter. Your heart will race with excitement. You'll tear into the room you share with your sis and lay your hoop gear out on the chair by your bed like some kind of giddy schoolgirl, which is pretty much how you feel. Readers, take a few minutes to jot your thinking, then go back to the lesson platform for part two of the read aloud.